So we've created our Ember app, and we've created our Rails app, and then we've hooked them up together through active model serializers. Now we can get to the fun parts. The first thing we'll do is get a little bit of some better styling in here. And as you can see, this is just some basic CSS and some changes to the HTML. There has been nothing new with Ember here. So we'll move on quickly. Next, we'll add an attribute to our monsters that says whether it's active or not. This will allow us to add interactivity soon. And it'll also give us an opportunity to look at if statements in handlebars. So we'll start with a Rails migration that will add active attribute to our monster class. Inside that migration, we will add a column and we'll add it to the monsters. It will be active and it will be a Boolean. Then we can go back to our terminal and run that migration. Then to make sure we're sending out that active attribute with the JSON, we'll go to our monster serializer and add it to the attributes. Then you can see that we're sending out the active attribute with the JSON, but they're all null. So we'll need to update some of them in our database. And with that done, we'll see that our JSON has both some that are true and some that are null. In JavaScript, null is falsy, so it means it acts sort of like false. And that's made explicit when you go to the Ember data model, and we're going to take our active attribute, and we're going to make it a Boolean. So it will be explicitly turned from a falsy value into an actual false. I'll show you that in the Ember inspector, which by the way, the Ember inspector is very useful and you can download it as a Chrome add-on. And I believe there's also one for Firefox. Anyways, we'll go to our data and we'll grab our monsters. You can see that active is shown as explicitly false, not just null. So we have this data. Let's display it to the user. We'll start off super duper simple. It'll be active and then monster.active. And that'll display true or false. We can do something a little bit easier for the user. Let's go ahead and put it first inside the monster div. And then we'll want to show the word active, but only if it's active. So we'll use the if helper. So if monster.active, then we show the word active, and then we'll close out that if block. So we're using the if helper, and this hash means it's a block helper. So it takes something in between. It's just like our each. There are several different types of things that are block helpers, and you can create your own later. Anyway, if monster is active, we'll show active. And here we go. We're showing these two as active. But we can do even better. First, we'll create a piece of CSS that gives us a darker background color for a monster. And then we'll see, look how it is light, and then look how it is there dark. So we can use an if statement. So if the monster is active, and this is the non-block form of the if statement. So if the monster is active, then it will apply the dark CSS class to that div. And you can see that these two are darkened. And therefore, that information is being displayed. No need for that if helper at the bottom. So now we're displaying things differently based on whether the active Boolean is true or false. Now let's add a button that lets you toggle between true and false. And you'll see how easy it is to keep your page up to date using Ember. So we'll do this with a very simple button. And the button will say toggle active. So it shows up like this and the user can press it. Now, what should happen when the user presses it? 
The way that we link that user action to something in the code is through the action helper. So we'll put in the action helper and we'll have the toggle active action. Now we go and define this action in a controller. So we will go and we will generate a controller for the application since that's the route that we're in. So notice that the controller and the route and the template, their name all matches up. And so Ember will automatically link them. It can do this because of the naming convention. And then you can do cool things like have the Ember route inspector in the Ember inspector. Anyways, let's define that action. So inside our Ember controller, we'll have an actions hash and we'll put in the toggle active action. It's just a function, but it's an action because it's in that actions hash. So just so we can see that these things are connecting, let's log hello from the action here when the action is called. And then we'll see that it's running. Now actions, just like functions, can take arguments. And that's good because we'll need to know which monster we're wanting to be toggling this on. So we'll take in a monster and then we'll have to feed in that monster from the handlebars. So we'll go ahead and log that monster so you can see what we have. So we've got that and it's got some funky stuff here. But we can see that the ID is two there. And if we do a different one, it is a different ID. So we are indeed grabbing a specific monster. Now what we can do with it, that monster is we can, we're wanting to toggle the property. There's actually something called toggle property. And so we're going to toggle the active property. So let's give that a try. So you can see that we're changing whether active is true or false. And that's reflected in the styling. And that's really great. It's super easy. And to do this, the page doesn't have to reload like you might in pure server side code. Now, of course, if we reload the page, it'll go back to where it was. It's not yet saving it to Rails. Let's get it to do that. On the Ember side, this is really easy. We're just going to call monster.save. And then when we click this, it'll call monster.save, but we'll see that there's an error coming from Rails. So let's fix that. So that'll be in our monsters controller. We'll want the update method. And in this update method, this will look familiar. We're going to find the monster using the ID param. And then that monster, we're going to update the attributes. And because of strong params, we're going to get that from the monster params that we define here. And that will be params.require monster. And then we're going to permit uh, just active for now. And then finally, we will render the JSON from that monster that we've updated. So let's go ahead and try that again here. And we toggle it and no new error message. We'll see that this one has saved. And we'll switch everything here. No error messages. And they save. It looks a little different because this one got knocked down to the bottom because it was the most recently updated and that's how we happen to be sorting them. And so that right there is your first interactive piece of Ember. Let's go over that again. Let's take a through line of it. So we have our rails. We add the active Boolean and then we have the serializer, which will send that active Boolean out as well. Then we go to our monster.js file, our model in Ember, and we add the Boolean attribute 
And this will make it so even if it's null, if it's a falsy thing, it'll coerce it to false. So that makes it easier to handle in the rest of our application. Then in the handlebars, we have an if statement where if monster.active is true, then it'll have the dark CSS class. Then you have the action toggle active, which is triggered whenever you click this button. And it'll feed a monster, the current monster, into the toggle active action. That toggle active action is stored on the controller, which are different than Rails controllers. Remember, Ember routes are close to Rails controllers. And Rails doesn't really have anything like an Ember controller. Anyway, so it does this action, and it takes in that monster, it toggles the property, and then it calls .save. And this sends a put request to your Rails server, which is then received here. And so that right there is your first piece of interactivity with Ember. I know this is a long video, but it's actually much quicker to do when you're not explaining everything and when you have a lot of this already set up. So anyways, now we've covered the core concepts of connecting Ember and Rails. There is, of course, a lot more that you can do in Ember. So that's why in the next and final video in this series, I'll be showing you just very quickly some of the cool Ember features that we didn't get around to talking about and tell you where you can go to find out more about Ember. I'll see you there.